These are mainly tight junctions and foot processes of astrocytes. Now let's draw a rough image of how this might look. These are the tight junctions that are present. And if this is your astrocyte, right, some star-shaped cell, these processes will go and reinforce the tight junctions, right? This is how the blood-brain barrier is majorly formed. However, one interesting point that you have to remember in exam point of view is that it is absent in the circumventricular organs. Now, what are these circumventricular organs? You can remember them with the mnemonic SOAP, where S stands for subfernicial organ, O is organum vasculosum of lamina terminalis, also known as O V L. T, right? A stands for area postrema and P is for posterior pituitary. All of these structures lack a blood-brain barrier. Now, when we think about blood-brain barrier, the second point that comes to your mind is what about its permeability? Which structures can permeate through it and which cannot? Let's look at them. The permeable substances are glucose with its transporter that is GLUT1. Kindly please remember it is GLUT1. It can be asked as a question. And water via aquaporin 4. Gases mainly carbon dioxide, oxygen and nitrogen. And of course your lipid soluble hormones that's nothing but your steroids. Now the non-permeable substances are protein hormones and dopamine. And also the H plus ions. All of these components are impermeable for the blood-brain barrier. 